Lives that remind us about God. This is part 19. And an interesting, an interesting person to look at tonight, Martha. And I'm calling it learning to prioritize devotion to Jesus. It's a more controversial text than a light reading might lead you to believe. The issue is uh, it has a lot of application, uh, surprising application to the mindset maybe of today's church. By that, I don't mean Cedarview. I mean the church. Luke 10, 38 to 42, let me read. Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. We usually don't think of serving the Lord as being a distraction. We think of it as being, don't we, a good thing? How are the kids? Oh, they're serving the Lord. We, that's not a negative thing. That, that's a positive thing. Martha was distracted with much serving. In other words, her serving was keeping her from something else. And she went up to him, that's to Jesus, and said, Lord... Do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. That seems perfectly reasonable to me. You got two people. One of them's getting everything ready, cooking, cleaning, getting everything, setting the table, putting the dishes on, doing, and the other one's not doing a thing. I would think Mary needs the lecture, not Martha. So here's the surprising ending, 41. But the Lord answered her, Martha, with the complaint, Martha, Martha. I like when he says, when he says the name twice, you know what he's saying, just, just Martha, Martha, get a grip here. You are, two words, anxious and troubled. Anxious, troubled. Those aren't, those aren't good uh, adjectives. You're anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. I find it a fascinating text. Maybe just some background points. Martha lived with her sister Mary and her brother Lazarus. He's a little more famous. John tells us the name of their hometown and says it was Bethany. And Jesus seemed to frequent their home as he traveled through that region. This is the place where Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. That's in John chapter 11. So he's going to be the one that gets all the attention. It was at Bethany, Jesus was anointed by Mary, remember? And he said it was for his future burial. That's in John 12, 1 to 7. So this is a significant place in the travel and ministry of Jesus. Now, Martha's failure. I said earlier, I think Martha must have found it strange that she got the lecture the rebuke that she thought should have gone to Mary. I mean, Martha goes to Jesus and says, Mary, (laughs) okay, Mary's got a problem. She's not helping. I'm doing all the work. And Jesus, in his reply, has nothing bad to say about Mary and a little bit of loving criticism to Martha. I'm sure she wasn't expecting it. What had Martha done wrong? Is it wrong to want to host properly 
and look after a guest? Is there anything wrong with that? There's something in Martha's actions. We look at it, and it just makes sense. What's the use of Mary's devotion to Jesus when there's important work to be done? Just What are you doing? Just sitting at his feet. Sitting at his feet doesn't get anything done. Who would get dinner if everybody just sat at the feet of Jesus and nobody got anything ready? I mean, deep down, nobody maybe wants to admit it out loud, but I mean, Martha's actions seem to make a bit of sense. We, we admire good activity, don't we? Do you, who wants to go to a church that just has a great band and sings good songs and has no concern at all for social justice, the poor? Would that be a healthy church? Just devotion to Jesus all the time. When, when there's work to be done, lives to be reached, situations to be changed. See, we, Martha makes sense. The issue seems to lie in those words, anxious, I mentioned them, anxious and troubled. It's in that 40th verse. That seems to be what Jesus is, is hitting on. It is right to attend to one's duties and responsibilities, and that's precisely where the danger lies. Martha would never dream of robbing a bank or committing adultery. She wouldn't dream of committing those kinds of outward acts of rebellion. But that's not the only way spiritual damage can be done in our lives. That's not the only way lives can cool off. And that, that seems to cut to the heart of the significance of this account. You don't have to do something bad to miss a spiritual opportunity. All you have to do is ignore something more important. You don't have to do something bad. All you have to do is not give attention to something more important, to what is most important. So this passage, this passage is, is more about the proper ordering of our lives rather than good and evil. Martha is anxious and she's troubled. What is it that sucks the life and joy out of service and work for the Lord? Okay. What is it that sucks joy out of service and devotion to the Lord? And what is it that puts joy back into service and devotion to the Lord? That's the issue here. Devotion to Jesus isn't the opposite of service. But devotion to Jesus is the only proper fuel for a life of service. Devotion to Jesus puts joy back into service. When you put service first, all you have is a job description and a list of responsibilities. You'll end up distracted you'll end up troubled. But when everything I do flows out of this heart of love and devotion to Jesus, it changes the nature of the service that I will offer. It's like a marriage. For me to do nice things for my wife, isn't a chore. That's because I love her. But if I had to do the same things, a list of jobs and yard work and everything else for most of you in this place, it would just be a chore. What's different there? Well, the love is first. 
and it makes it so that I'm not anxious and troubled to the best of my ability. I, I delight. See, that's the issue that Jesus is getting at here. It's not an anti-service passage. She has chosen the one thing necessary, 42. And all of us, if we're good Bible readers, she has done the one thing necessary. Everyone in the room ought to ask one question. Necessary for what? What is Jesus talking about? She has done the one thing necessary. Necessary for what? Necessary to serve the Lord without being bothered and troubled and distracted and worn out. That's where the love and devotion comes in. There's a, there's a, there's a message for all of us who would try and build our righteousness around just ethical merit and diligence without giving priority to the presence and person of Jesus Christ. Jesus talked about this in another place. In Matthew 13, 22, he's talking about the sowing of the word in our hearts. What makes it fruitful? 13, 22 says, as for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world. Mary. Martha. Martha. The cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, choke the word and it proves unfruitful. That's very close to Martha's problem. It's proven by the fact that she actually wants Jesus to send Mary away from the place at his feet so she can help her in the kitchen. Notice the assumption. The assumption is it's more important to be working in the kitchen than worshiping at Jesus' feet. And, and, of course, we don't want to be like that, but you've heard it. People get so heavenly-minded that they're no earthly good. That's what Martha's saying about Mary. <laughs> How easy it is to settle for doing something for Jesus while not presenting our heart to him in adoration and praise and worship and devotion. Three. The importance of devotion. I think we're in need of this story. It's not that Jesus is against service and work. We know that because right before this account, in the same, in the same uh, context, Jesus talks about the Good Samaritan and the earnest labor for God that the Good Samaritan went out of his way to exercise. And Jesus is pleased with that. So there's more than one way to miss God's will for the moment. But Jesus is aiming at something different in this text. He's dealing specifically with the common tendency on the part of many, our world worships activity not devotion to Jesus, lots of activity. It's easy to place work, even in the church, above worship and devotion. How important is, we call it your devotional time during the day, where you set aside time that you could be doing other things and you open up the word, you pray, you get your mind centered on the Lord, you, you love him, you worship him. What's happening when it looks like nothing important is happening in, in just your devotional time, time in church? Well, well, plenty is happening. Plenty is happening. It's very important to keep God at the center of all of our worship and devotion. Consider this. Remember the fall of Lucifer? Do you remember how the Bible says he was lifted up in his own pride and pulled away from God-oriented proper worship? The truth is, the truth is, every heart that's fully devoted to the Lord is protecting the universe. It's keeping things in their proper place. Four. Did Martha enjoy her own dinner? 
It's more than a light-hearted question. No doubt, it was a more elaborate meal eaten in Bethany that day due to the hard work of Martha. But it's also true there would have been greater joy with a simpler meal and a deeper spirit of devotion among all the guests. Here's the important point. Martha wasn't joyful. Okay, remember what I said earlier? Martha was not joyful. We know that because Jesus says so. Martha is anxious and she's troubled. Neither one of those is joyful. She's not happy. When we get our eyes off Jesus and onto our labors alone, we will always lose the joy in our spirits that only his presence can bring. Five, last point. I'm fascinated with those words where Jesus says in verse 42, one thing is necessary. We talked about what that word necessary means. Mary has chosen the good portion. And then he says, which will not be taken away from her. What's that all about? They're really important words. We're talking, Jesus says, Martha, you're troubled, you're distracted. Mary's just sitting at my feet, listening. The text says, listening to what I say. And then Jesus says, Mary's doing what won't be taken from her. See, the truth of the matter is, your strength will one day be taken away from you. Everyone in this room. You're not always going to be able to do the stuff you do now. It'll be taken away. Your health, it'll be taken away one day. Trust me. Your, your visit to the hospital and then the cemetery, it's not a long way off. Gee, thanks, Pastor Don. I'm not trying to trouble you. I'm just saying, Jesus says, Martha, what Mary has here will never be taken from her. Your mental sharpness probably one day will be taken from you. The only thing left behind will be how much you love the Lord. This is his point in this account. Only what you and I love brings lasting joy. Accomplishments are important. I'm not saying they aren't, but they're fleeting. Love for Jesus Here's two things. Love for Jesus is what keeps our egos in check. I don't get proud in my service or in my labor. I'm at his feet. Love for Jesus is what keeps our egos in check. Love for Jesus is what keeps our success in work from becoming idolatrous. That's why Jesus says she's done what's necessary, what's all important. So, the things we need to pursue can be simply identified by this little test. You need to be devoted to something that can't slip away in the face of poverty, sickness, lack of health. Something that's just as real and important in your youth as at your deathbed. Something that will bring joy to your life, both now and eternally. Do serve the Lord. I hope you understood. This isn't a text against serving the Lord. This is a text, serve the Lord out of the devotion of your heart, not just as a list of tasks. Everyone said?